Hi, and welcome back to my channel. This video is going to focus on the clothing and the shoes that I wore on my Tahoe Rim Trail through hike. This is the second part of my video series regarding my gear on the TRT. So if you missed the first part on my pack and sleep system, you can check it out after this video. I started with a Patagonia tank top to hike in, but I wound up having to ditch it for a shirt that was covering my shoulders. It was pretty hot out and I was sweating and the pack straps were rubbing on my skin and it was extremely painful. I learned that I always need to wear shirts that cover my shoulders, but I do know other people that wear tank tops when hiking and they don't have a problem. So just like I mentioned in the video before this, my clothing and my setup is not a one size fits all. What works for me may not work for you. So I actually wound up hiking in a sleep shirt from Kari Tra. I don't know if that's how you say their company name, but that's how I say it. And then I wore a Patagonia sports bra. I brought a second hiking shirt that was also used as my sleep shirt if it was warm enough at night. I bought this gem at a thrift store in Palm Springs, California, waiting out a storm while through hiking the PCT. So unfortunately, I don't have a link for this one. It is a cotton shirt, so they, the experts, whoever out there, recommend not hiking in cotton shirts, but I do love sleeping in it at night because it's super comfy and cozy, and I usually wear this t-shirt when I'm hiking in for a town day. I don't know, it's just like my little tradition of when I put this cotton t-shirt on, it means I can get like a really cold drink or some hot coffee that day since it's my town shirt. I apparently really like Patagonia because I wore their barely baggy shorts and their underwear. Since my hair is kind of crazy and wild, I do like to have a few options on how to keep it in control as much as possible. So sometimes I wore a buff headband or various hats. This particular one is an Arcteryx cap and I absolutely love it. And then if it was cold, then I would have a beanie. For sleeping, I brought some thermal pants from First Light, and I also brought my beloved Melly fleece for if I needed something warmer at night. Instead of a down jacket, I opted for a synthetic jacket from Enlightened Equipment. This is the Torrid Apex, and it gets a thumbs up from me. I absolutely love this jacket. I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about bringing a synthetic jacket versus a down jacket. I still love down jackets, but I really, really loved this jacket from Enlightened Equipment. If it was pretty cold, then I would bring some darn tough socks to sleep in, and also I would put socks on if my feet were extremely dirty and I didn't want my feet bare in my sleeping bag. Although I am known to get pretty dirty on trail, I don't want to get my sleeping bag dirty, so I often wore socks at night, even if it was pretty hot outside, just so I didn't get my dirty feet all in my sleeping bag. But speaking of socks, let's move on to the socks and shoes that I wore when hiking. Foot pain is something that all hikers will face at one point. So you really need to figure out your sock and shoe system as I like to call it because it can drastically affect your mood and if your through hike can be successful or not. I used the very colorful Ultra Lone Peak 4.5s. You either love these shoes or you hate them. I love these shoes for the zero drop and the wide toe box, but there's not much cushion compared to let's say Hoka's or other shoes out there. So once again, I'm going to reiterate, you need to test out these shoes yourself. Just because I wore them and love them does not mean that they are right for your feet. Something that I recommend for all hikers is to buy Injinji toe sock liners. So what I do is I put these toe socks on and the liners are thinner than a normal sock but the fact that they're separating my toes from rubbing on each other have saved me so many blisters. Then I like to put a thin sock on top of the liners if needed, which I usually just do anyway, maybe out of habit, but that helps prevent extra friction from my feet to the shoe. And I rarely, rarely, rarely ever get blisters, so I really feel like this system has saved my feet from just these horrible blisters that I have seen hikers get. Then you can't forget about the fun gaiters from Dirty Girl Gaiters. These lightweight gaiters really help prevent rocks and sand and dirt getting into your shoes and your socks, which that can in turn give you blisters because of all the rubbing. So for me, this is a fantastic setup for my feet. Now my feet still hurt, 
I'm not saying that I, I go hiking for miles and miles without any pain, but for me, this setup makes my feet feel the best at the end of every day. And finally, I tried new camp shoes this hike. I used the Teva Original Universal Sandals. They were great camp shoes for me and I really liked them, but sometimes I like to hike in my camp shoes for a few miles and these just didn't feel very comfortable on my feet to do that. I didn't feel like they had much support. I actually did love them for just camp shoes or if I was just to wear them casually walking around. But if you are looking for something more durable or some camp shoes that you can potentially hike in, I probably wouldn't recommend these shoes. If you want camp shoes that you can potentially walk more in on a hike, then I would actually recommend Bedrock Sandals. I brought those on my Pacific Crest Trail through hike and those are fantastic shoes. They can be a bit heavier depending what model you get, but they are extremely durable and there are people who have completed entire through hikes using those sandals. All right, well, this concludes the clothing and shoe portion of my Tahoe Rim Trail gear series. I hope it was helpful for you. Next up, I will be going over my electronics that I brought on my through hike of the Tahoe Rim Trail. I hope to see you there. Have a fantastic day and like always, happy trails.